Hey guys, this is BenRob0329, and today we're going to be taking a look at some basic Mesicon circuits. Now this video is not meant as an introduction to Mesicons itself, but rather showing some more practical use cases for various things that you'll end up using in your own contraptions. Most of what you see here is just a concept. You will have to tweak and modify each of the designs here, depending on the contraption and use case. But this should give you a general idea so that you can implement it in your own projects. If you're looking for a very, very basic tutorial to just explain the basics of how wires connect and how to place them and what all the different bits do, I would recommend checking out one of a few videos on YouTube at this point, as well as the Mescon's basics tutorial over on the Mesicon's laboratory. So our first circuit here is the very simple double piston extender. Now I will say this is way over engineered on the Mesicon's laboratory page because they actually used a Lua controller to do this, which is completely absurd. You need nothing of the sort. You can use two delayers for this, and it works fairly well, and is fairly quickly. I believe that the timings have changed more recently. At some point, pistons became more forgiving, it seems, because for a long time, I could not get it to work on anything but one, and then one, and two on the second set of delayers. However, now it seems to work with one, and then one, and one, but I am all for having more forgiving timings because timings are a pain in the butt. So anything that can be done to improve that, in my opinion, is wonderful. An alternate design is to, of course, use diodes, as I tend to do when I need things to be fast, uh, which most time I try to design things to be as fast as possible nowadays, and that will of course result in a much faster extender due to the fact that gates have a much, much smaller delay than the smallest delay on a delayer. So you will probably see in the upcoming clips a few times where I use diodes or delayers depending on the context for different amounts of delay. Obviously diodes if I need a very, very small amount of delay and delayers if I need a larger amount of delay. Something to keep in mind is that gates are not instantaneous, so if you throw a gate into your circuit and you find that the timings are all off now, you will need to compensate for the added little bit of delay elsewhere in that circuit. You also have the vertical version of the double piston extender, which does need slightly different timings, however, it's mostly the same. The only real quirk is that you have to be careful when placing the vertical miscon not to also activate the bottom piston. Here, I have shifted the vertical miscon over a bit and then added a corner piece to activate the piston that I need. Up next, we have the pulse extender. This is a slightly older design of mine that is handy when you need something very compact and you don't need a lot of extension, but you do need some. I like to refer to this as a delayer pyramid because of the fact that it is simply a stack of delayers in a triangular formation. It works pretty simply. Short pulse goes in, long pulse comes out. Do not, however, that you will always have some delay due to the fact that it requires at least one delayer for all the timings to line up. Also note that all of the delayers must have the exact same setting, otherwise you'll get gaps in your signal. An alternative design, which I have put together more recently, is using a move stone. And the way this one works is a pulse goes in, pushing the move stone over, causing a power plant or mise block depending on your circumstance, to become connected to your output. The original signal then slowly makes its way through a set of delayers up until it reaches the move stone again and causes it to move back, which will disconnect the output, causing it to turn off. This circuit is best if you need full isolation from your input signal, because the output signal will always be of the same length, no matter the length of the input signal, or if you want a much longer signal than the equivalent stack of delayers can reasonably give, as this is only one row of repeaters rather than 20. Up next, we have a monostable circuit, which takes a long input pulse and outputs a very short pulse, in this case to a configurable degree due to the delayer. If you need extraordinarily small delays, you can replace the delayer with a gate, 
and you will get a very, very small pulse. The way this works is fairly simple. Long pulse goes in, it goes through this wire, activates this MIS block, which then goes through into the output. After a small delay though, the piston will activate, breaking the circuit, causing the output to turn off. This is useful when you have a long input such as a switch, but only need to send a short pulse in order to activate something such as a piston. You can turn this rising edge monostable circuit into a falling edge monostable circuit by simply adding a NOT gate to the start, and then it will turn on when the circuit turns off. Up next we have not quite a variation, but you could in some sense consider it a variation, I suppose. We have the dual edged monostable circuit. Now I made this before I knew that dual edged monostable circuits were all that useful. Uh, in my attempt to make a solid state or pistonless monostable circuit, which I have not been able to do so far. And this is useful when you need to send two pulses rather than one for a given thing. For example, if you want to double the speed of a blinky plant, you can simply put one in instead of a, a switch or what have you. And then for every on, it will turn on one pulse. And for every off, it will turn off one pulse. Thus you get double the speed. This works by splitting your input into both ends of a ZOR gate with one side being delayed. So that way the ZOR gate will turn on when you first get your input and then it will turn off when the second side gets powered shortly thereafter. And it will turn back off again because your input will turn off immediately causing the ZOR gate to turn back on but then the delayed input will turn off shortly thereafter causing it to turn back off. This is very useful in a number of circumstances most notably when you need to double pulse a piston from a single pulse input. Up next, we have somewhat of a combination of two previous designs. It works similarly to the Movestone Pulse Extender. However, in this case, it's hooked up to a monostable circuit so that the Movestone moves once and will only move once no matter how long the input pulse is. This is accomplished using a gate rather than a delayer to provide an extremely short pulse so that the move stone only has enough time powered to move once, forwards or backwards. This results in it becoming a T flip-flop. This is useful if you want a button or need a single pulse to toggle something as opposed to requiring a lever or some form of circuit breaker. This is useful if you need to take a short pulse and turn it into a continuous signal until another signal comes in, in which case it will be a continuous lack of signal. You could use this to toggle a machine on and off from a single input source, such as a button, or to permanently toggle a door open or closed, such as from a Mescon torch key. Moving on further, we have ourselves the Delayer-based Triple Piston Extender. Now this is quite a bit bigger than the Double Piston Extender, and the largest factor of that is because it requires a monostable circuit to send the last pulse. Now this one is rather slow as we're using delayers and have several different pistons that we have to juggle all the timings for. However, it does work fairly reliably and despite its size, it's about as compact as you're gonna get for triple piston extenders. Now the timing for these goes five, three, one, four, two, three. And that three has to be the last pulse and that's what the monostable circuit is for. The monostable circuit has been stretched out to be a more horizontal circuit in this case and is a falling edge monostable circuit so that we can have an extended pulse holding the thing open. So that way, no matter how long of an input pulse we have, we can always have it turn off and then it will still send that last pulse despite the fact that the switch only just now turned off. A much faster design is of course to use gates and this results in a very quick triple piston extender. Use the same overall timings and design, although it is worth noting that the difference between gates and vertical MISCON versus just gates is slightly different, so that may play a role depending on how you organize the circuit overall. And then last but not least, we have clocks. These are all largely the same. If you're not using Blinky Power Plant, you're probably using a NOT gate combined with a delayer to produce an alternating signal. You can use multiple NOT gates instead, but generally it's best to just use one as you only need an odd number. 
However, if you do only use one NOT gate, as I have done here, you will need a delayer or a diode in order to separate the two halves of the circuit. I would set this one up with a circuit breaker piston here so that when it gets a signal, the clock then turns on and the delayer gate obviously makes it a fairly slow clock. We can, of course, speed it up quite a bit and then slow it down by simply adjusting the timing of the delayer. Well, that about wraps it up for today. So if you like this video, please hit that like button and comment down below for what you'd like to see in a future video. Thanks for watching.